Good morning, you bunch of champions. It's Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and this is vlog number four. Okay, I'm wearing a jumper. Can you believe that? It probably won't last for too long, but it's an overcast day, typical winter. I think I know it's probably about 12 or 11 degrees Celsius, which uh, is probably as cold as it gets at this time of the morning, about 9:30. At this Marina around this part of the world anyway in the subtropics you know you can get to zero and we do get some frost sometimes I'll worry about my winter tomatoes that I grow but anyway I'm gonna go down let the chickens out then I've got to get to work around the yard here and continue on what I'm doing whipper snipper still kaputs um, I've got another one a replacement in the meantime it's a still you would have seen that in the last video I didn't detail it much uh, it's uh, working pretty good. Had a few issues with the with the bumper that came with it, um, but anyway, I'll talk more about that another time. I think I've, I'm just about done with talking about whippersnippers. I'll give you a quick look on the way down to letting the ducks and chickens out. Um, it's looking quite neat out the back here, very nice and neat. Even if I do say so myself, which is good when you're getting on top of things on the acreage. Uh, you know, you you look outside and you look out the back veranda and. Uh, it looks so picturesque and uh, you just love being part of it. You hear the birds, you smell the air, the cut grass and you know the, the open space and all the fruit trees and plants growing and the food crops. I don't know, it's, it's really good for the soul to live like this, you know. So, let's go down. Now, I know Kate on Facebook said, how come you haven't mulched all your trees? And the fact is, I do mulch all the trees, but over time, the mulch wears in, and uh, it needs to be replaced. Uh, here's, here's the sick joke again. I just well, I got a bit sidetracked. I still haven't picked these limes up. Still haven't whipped, snipped around that tree. Just haven't been able to get to it. Everything just, you know, keeps it going. But anyway, here's a classic example. This is this Lane's Lake navel. Uh, grow the, the late, Lane's Lake because it, it, it fruits um, or ripens the fruit just after the Washington. So it gives me an extension of crop. But if you look below here, you'll see that it looks like it hasn't been mulched, but it has. That's all mulched, but it's all been, it's all gone into the ground. And it looks like... There's nothing around that tree. There, I, there's mulch around all these trees, and uh, but you know eventually the grass grows through, and you know whip the uh, The thing is, uh, I usually replace the mulch about every 12 or 18 months. We also had a big storm in winter, and that storm, the, the water rushes from the top of the hill, and it can run through the orchard, and washes away a lot of the mulch down the bottom of the hill you know, almost near, down near where the duck dam is. And so that can be a hassle too. So there's all sorts of things, elements, normal breakdown, and that type of thing that, that gets rid of the mulch. So I, through winter, um, I use, well, through the end of winter coming into spring is usually when I do start to mulch more around all these trees because what you want is those trees at their peak when they're starting to flower and then the, and the growth spurt hits all the citrus will be flowering it'll smell beautiful or most of the other trees will be flowering the mangoes and that and that's when you want a good mulch around the trees uh, this time of year when most of the trees are dormant or like you see the citrus they're actually fruiting but they're pretty much in a dormant state they're not shooting they're not flowering uh, most of them anyway so you, you're better off um, uh, you don't have to it's not a necessity to keep your fruit trees mulched all the time if you've got the time to do that go for it keep them mulched up all the time and keep them topped up you know perhaps I could get into a routine of doing that but that's not my routine my routine is to put the mulch down let it go for 12 months or 18 months or so when it all go when it starts to go down well then I'll replace it and it's usually before the spring 
so that it gives that plant, that tree, the opportunity to have a really good uh, start to the new growing season, right? Um, because mulching locks in the moisture, it locks in the nutrients and it protects the roots from the harsh sun that's going to come in summer. So that's my line of thinking. When I plant a new tree at this time of year though, of course I do mulch around it like I've showed you in that video. Um, and I give it a good mulch. And if I've got spare mulch or something that I'm cutting down like I'll show you today, uh, I'll then, I then will um, throw that mulch around some of the bigger trees. I've, I've got some, I'll, I'll, no, I'll talk about it later. So the, the patch is looking good. Asparagus has died off. I'll give you a proper look at the... And now what I'll do now is cut all that back now and mulch that heavily, give it a feed, ready for spring and the asparagus will come back up. The ginger's gone. Well, the ginger is all died off. But if I dig through, there'll be bits of ginger in here. Um, we've been digging it up to eat, of course, but I'll leave some more of it in there for this new coming year's crop. All right, the ducks sound like they're having a gutful. This long pipe you see going along here, that comes from our EnviroCycle. We have a treated waste system here on our property and that treated water uh, gets sprayed out, usually on the grass, sometimes around fruit trees if, um, if I need to, but I'm trying to just renovate uh, this area here which gets quite a bit of traffic. This is our picnic area down the back here where we have our barbies and stuff and uh, yeah, this is a bare patch of ground where this picnic table over here used to be. Uh, and I got rid of it, put it over there. Um, and I'm just growing the grass here. So it's handy to be able to recycle your waste water like that. And get it, you know, make it useful in the garden. You wouldn't you wouldn't put it you wouldn't put that waste water on the vegetable patch, although I've been told that the waste water that's treated from our system is pretty good. Uh, uh, you know, as in health-wise, I wouldn't put it on vegetables or anything like that. But underneath a big fruit tree, where it's where the water's not going to splash on the fruit or anything, that's fine, I think. But generally, I use it on the lawn and um, and ornamentals. Okay, everything looks pretty good down here. I know they've all got food and water. They just all want to get out. They're not going down to the dam. Are they going to make their mind up and go to the dam today? Or are they going to have a rest up in the grass? Oh no, oh, one of the, oh, they're waiting for one of the ducks that's left behind. Oh well, they said stuff ya. See ya, we're out of here. Make your own way down, they reckon. Alright. So that's the morning let out. Chilly freezing morning in the subtropics. I'll have this jumper off in 15 minutes because I've got to get into some work and I'll show you all about that in a minute. Behind me is the front of my place and what I've got to get into today and this is how it ties in with the mulching that I was talking about before is these palm fronds or fronds that I need to cut back. They're all bushed out all over our staircase behind me and also here in that sort of little makeshift garden that I'd made, a sort of like an ornamental garden. And you can see how bushy it all is. And it, uh, they, they grow up like that. They're a skinny type bushy palm and then they have those fronds that can turn into the longer ones. Generally, I, we cut them back because you know, it looks untidy and especially if it grows over the staircase, 
which uh, so I need to I need to cut all that back. What I'm going to do though is use this use these cutoffs and cutbacks. I'm going to throw them right around the larger some of the larger fruit trees. I'm not going to I, I may mulch them up. I'll, I'll have a think about it um, if I've got time. But I might just layer them underneath the trees, and I'll show you that later. And and they can break down in their own accord underneath the fruit tree. Not the smaller ones, but some of the larger fruit trees. And I think that'll be the go. That can give me some free mulch and uh, and a good use or a reuse for getting rid of a lot of this green. Well I've done one side, you can see it in the distance there. Just here, I got pretty brutal, I ended up using this. And I just wanted to completely clear it out and I'm going to do the same to that side. I've put all the big stuff there, I'll take that to the tip because you can't even mulch that, this stuff. It doesn't go through the mulcher any mulcher really, unless it's maybe an industrial one. And I'll, the other pile is what I'll use around the fruit trees. But I've still got to do that and that one. So uh, yeah, it took me probably about an hour to get that cut back. I'll get my chainsaw out once I've done the general pruning and tidy it up a little bit around the bottom and make it nice and level. But yeah, that's opening it up quite good and that's uh, not a bad thing through winter to open up that so we get the rising sun hitting the house warming up a bit but yeah lots of work to go well it's the next day and it's nearly August and soon it'll be only one month left of winter and I'll just show you some of our stone fruit they're already starting to flower our plums, nectarines, starting to flower. So you can tell spring is on the way. Of course, no leaves or anything yet, but that's good. The other thing, of course, is I'm still going with doing all this, pulling off all these palm fronds and thinning them out so that we've got more clear access to the staircase and uh, yeah, the sun hits the house more. This, uh, I've divided it up into a couple of piles. I'll just go back and give you a bit more perspective. But that big pile there is small stuff that I'm gonna just put directly around some of the fruit trees and I'll show you how I do that. That pile there has got some medium stuff I'm gonna probably chop up and chuck it to the tip and same with that pile there some of the big branches I've still got to get thin this one out as well and uh, you know the, the thing is there's always some maintenance to do and in this case there's a huge job coming up to fix this staircase behind me I'll give you a look at that and I'll chat a little bit about it So part of the reasoning of thinning all this out was so that um, builders can get access to it. I've got a builder, I've had a builder come and have a look at this. Luckily I know a guy from tennis who, who uh, he's a builder and he's able to put me onto one of his mates. But you can check these stairs out, they're totally rotted through. They've been checked in, so a good job initially. Everything checked in, but the problem with checking wood in like this uh, is that it leaves a lot of holes or cracks for water to run into. The, the, having said that, these, this staircase is about 25 years old, so we've got a pretty good innings out of it. 
uh, we bought this house about 10 years ago and uh, even then you know she was starting to fall down a bit um, and you know I kept patching it up uh, but it's just beyond repair now um, it, I'd love it if I was a, a, a carpenter or builder and, and had the expertise to rebuild this but I'm just simply not and you know I'm a pretty good hack around the place I can change stairs and that type of thing um, the odd stairs or I can replace a banister and that type of thing that's fine but when it comes to a big job like this you know it's best to get the pros in unless you know exactly what you're doing and I don't because otherwise this is just going to take me too long to do and probably cost me more in the long run but yeah she's falling right over it's basically condemned and uh, needs to be completely redone see the trailer in the background just heading off to the dump now so that I can get a whole bunch of that rubbish that uh, green rubbish and green waste and uh, empty that trailer first and then be able to pack that green waste in that trailer so that at least when the builders come if I haven't had a chance to get it to the dump the waste stuff well then at least um, they'll be out of their road some of you guys wanted to know where sort of I live around the general area well there's um I don't live that far out of suburbia to be honest just in a little acreage suburb most of the acreage are around the three or three or four acre some of them are a bit bigger like this one on the right you know maybe 12 acres or something a um, few farms with some cattle cattle around quaint little places nice little old farms and uh, really not too far from schools and yeah we're heading into uh, the shopping precinct pretty soon maybe in five minutes Now you can see what I'm doing, can't you? I'm spreading those green palm fronds underneath the tree, just around the drip and root zone, and particularly where I whipper snipped. And what that's going to do is suppress all the weeds, suppress the grass. But those palm fronds, from my experience, even though they're green and you're putting it around the tree, uh, it's not going to break down too quickly, but it is going to suppress the weeds and everything. The good thing is that it, because it doesn't break down so fast, it won't uh, give the root zone a, a burn off or, um, or smother it too much. It still allows quite a bit of air and also there'll be quite a bit of airflow around the trunk of the tree too. So if some of those fonds and that lean against the, the trunk of the tree, it's not going to get any trunk rot or get too moist there. And I'll just watch it as that breaks down over a couple of weeks. I'll just keep pushing it away from the truck to make sure that there's no collar or anything that, that sets in. And uh, you know, a really good foot thick layer of 
of these palm fronds puts them to really good use. You can see that I threw away all the all the big pieces that I wasn't able to mulch up with my own little mulcher here. Um, I could spend hours mulching up each of those um, leaves, uh, but that that really would be a total waste of time. This will still break down over slowly. It's almost like a little bit of a compost pile around each tree, and it just puts those good soft, got good soft litter to uh, to use. But yeah, yeah, well, getting there, getting there. Good work. Okay, well the sun's nearly down, and as you can see behind me, I've cleaned up those big piles of palm fronds. I've thrown all the, the thick stuff in the trailer, I'll take that to the tip for mulching. Maybe while I'm there I might grab some extra mulch from, you know, the composted piles if I've got time. But all that mulch there, it practically only went around two fruit trees, two medium sized fruit trees, a navel orange and a uh, honey murcot mandarin and I like to pack it nice and thick so I'll take you through and I'll give you a bit of a look and then I'll wrap this video up um, I think that's enough and I'll, I'll release this vlog so that it doesn't go into another day sort of thing but yeah another big day I've got to get inside now and cook the boys some uh, some food so I've got to pick some veggies from the garden again and we'll have that with uh, whatever meat I decide to pick tonight maybe we'll just have sausages I think <laughs> I'm feeling a bit knackered right so yeah all all fairly well cleaned up and that one there quite nice that'll be good when the stairs are properly finished and done and it'll open the place up I've got to obviously clean all this debris up but you know you can see the trail of bits of debris as I've been carrying it down to the back orchard here But yeah, I've laid it down nice and thick. A little bit I'm poking out here, but as I, as this condenses down, it'll be fine and I'll just keep tucking it in, go around with them, blow and a few times and it'll soon settle. And that won't be a, a drama at all. Here's the Lane's Late Navel Orange. And uh, you know, it's looking at about a foot and a half high, the mulch. And that's what I want going to stop any of that grass and weeds coming up from the middle here and uh, I'll just keep going and finding mulch I've got a lot of mulch down the back actually while I'm chatting I might as well go down and lock up the ducks and chickens but I've got a lot oh, I've got scraps upstairs that I really I'll tell you what I'll do um, what I, I it, what I do is I grow I grow um, easy to grow salad crops uh, for the chickens, it's just extra feed and also for the ducks. This type of mustard here I let go to seed and it comes up all over the property and so I'm always pulling one up as I walk down to the hens and I'll show you also in my in my rugged area down the back here which I was deliberately left as a bit of a mongrel area where uh, self-seeding salad crops come up, mostly mustards and Asian greens, like this here. And of course we can eat this, it's beautiful. Um, but if there's plenty of it, here's a whole heap of this mustard. Comes up everywhere at this time of the year, particularly when the grass doesn't grow very good, and so it overtakes the grass. Um, and I've just got a whole heap of sweet potato all through this mongrel area. And there's even some radishes that have come up over there. But this general area here I can use for this type of fodder for the birds. As I come down the ducks usually go in on their own accord. 
see me coming down. The chickens sometimes need rounding up. Come on, let's go. Looks like most are, most are in the pen. I'd say, starting to go to bed. These are just the young pullets there, the leghorns. They haven't started laying yet, they're just new to the flock. Throw that down there. And the, the hens will pick through that and that'll be all skeleton by the morning. And the ducks get to it as well when I leave. And that's them done. Oh well, I might as well sign off here, I guess. So that's the end of this vlog. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to share, like it uh, with a thumbs up and uh, ask any questions that you want. These type of vlogs, they're a bit all over the place. I don't get a lot of time to sort of explain everything in the finest details. So I'm happy to answer questions, of course. Visit the blog, selfsufficientme.com. That, that helps as well. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot again for watching. Thanks a lot for all your support. I've been overwhelmed with it. And uh, yeah, it's been a really great day working in the acreage. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.